Good afternoon, everyone. In today's video, we're going to try and rank the volatility in all 10 of the futures markets that we look at and do so in a very easy to read manner. Now, for all of our futures volatility box members that opted into the beta yesterday for text alerts, if you set up the process last night, then today you should have started to actually receive notifications. Here's one of those as an example. So this was at 7.36 a.m. And this was in crude when we had a breach on even our, concert, or our doomsday conservative volatility box models. And this was when we had the crude inventories report come out. So I thought these texts today was a very good first day uh, to be able to test a lot of these alerts. And you should have noticed that your phone was buzzing for quite a good portion of the day given the level of volatility that we saw in the marketplace. So now coming back in here to the graphic, the first thing that should stand out here is the Dow. The Dow today was the market that in terms of structure being defined by the volatility box was the only one that still respected its aggressive volatility box and was the place where you had the least volatility across the board. So that by far would be the one that I think I would rank number one in terms of least volatility. Now, if we try and divide the rest of this into a bit more grouping, so let's look at just say the indices here, the Russell and the NASDAQ both breached their doomsday conservative models, and we even went outside of it. I think the Russell a little bit deeper than the NASDAQ, but both broke their doomsday conservative models. The S&P 500, meanwhile, just on its conservative. So in terms of rank there, I would really go two here, then I would give the NASDAQ three, and then I would give the Russell a rank number four. So now tomorrow, if we saw that the Dow was continuing this pattern of being the less volatile market, that would be the place to look for for more interesting opportunities, especially for volatility fades, things of that sort. Now, if we move on to this next cluster here, so 30 year bond, you'll notice uh, we were on the doomsday conservative as well. Crude oil, doomsday conservative as well. This was the one in that text. This was off of the inventories report. I'll talk about this a little bit uh, deeper and we'll look at the charts as well. Then we had copper here, uh, copper also on its doomsday conservative. And natural gas was on its doomsday aggressive volatility box models. So if you were to try and rank this in any way, shape, or form here, it would really be something more like one, uh, crude oil, I think just based on how we saw how volatile it is. And everything else here, I think I would rank as something like two uh, to contain the volatility with these two being tied, the 30 year and copper. But all of this to say, we were on our doomsday conservative. Finally, if we move on to gold and silver here, silver was the less volatile market between gold and silver. And so if you were to try and rank it, silver would be one, gold would be two. And interestingly enough here, across the board, for almost all the markets in which we had the one or lower volatility, silver, for example, we had a winner, 53 ticks. If we come in and we take a look at the 30 year, this was one example where even with the doomsday conservative, we had a winner. With Russell, for example, we had two losers. Russell was the problem child today. And then if we come in and we take a look at which was, I think, the nicest winner or the cleanest winner, that would be something like the Dow, where again, you had less volatility compared to the rest of the markets. So now let's move on to take a look at the charts of crude oil. And then I also want to touch on Russell along with the Dow. All right, so starting off here, if we come into a chart of crude, and let's get the conversation rolling with uh, the Forex factory. I think they do a good job of not only displaying the results, but also the, the time frame in which we get the conversation started. So the inventories report took place at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, which is 7.30 a.m. Pacific. Our alerts, if I go back to the alerts, came at 7.36 a.m. Pacific. Also in the alerts, one thing to point out, you knew that we had already breached so far as the Doomsday Conservative, so you could skip all of the other models, did a pretty good job of letting you know how extreme we had fallen so far. Now coming into the Doomsday Conservative models here, we had price action breach our cyan entry line, and we'd like to then see an edge signal confirmation and an entry at the cyan line prior to hitting our first target. That's to say, we want to see all of our rules being met before we hit what would be our bare minimum first move. Now in uh, crude here, this move up right here ended up hitting that first target. We were looking for at least 22 cents, and we ended up hitting 25 cents in this move up. So that's where that crude trade was not valid. However, I know a lot of you are more aggressively trading the inventories report. So that's where I'm going to continue this conversation where we see we had an edge signal. You also had an opportunity to enter at the cyan line or better, and we stayed inside of our clouds. You did have to deal with a bit of heat before you saw a pretty drastic rip up higher here in crude where you hit T1 and T2. So that's where where for those of you that were much more aggressive here, crude was a fairly nice winner. The first target was at 22 cents, which again, we hit in this first move, which is why it wasn't valid per the trade plan rules. And then the second target was 83 cents or 830 bucks. Now, the reason why I'm calling this out, even though the trade didn't meet our rules, is I thought the delta here was a fairly interesting mechanism to get the ball rolling in terms of a catalyst for the volatility. We knew the delta here was greater. We had the alerts here do the job of signaling to us that, hey, crude has something here worthy of paying attention to 
and knowing exactly how extreme we've fallen. And then coming into the charts here, we also had the edge signal confirmation where you know that you're pretty much on the most absolute uh, conservative models that you can get to. This is really a 22 cent per contract gamble to see if you can really swing a home run sort of reversal, which is what you got here. So that's just one thing to keep in mind for the future. If we do see similar deltas again, maybe a reason to be a bit more aggressive on say something like the doomsday conservative model. Now switching gears, let's also discuss the Dow here, which I said the furthest we went was the aggressive volatility box model. And if I load in the aggressive model here, let's zoom out. You'll notice that the only one time we breached the sign entry line was right here, and we ended up bouncing from there, and that also happened to be an edge of our trade. So the aggressive models here were being respected. If I contrast this with something like, say, the NASDAQ, which should, I think, do a much better job of uh, painting how volatile this was, you'll notice the clouds here look much funkier. They can't even contain the volatility. And very clearly here, without even needing to zoom in, we go outside of our aggressive clouds. Similarly, we said we talk about the Russell. If I come into a chart of the Russell here, we take a look, you'll see in the case of the Russell, in that 10 to 11 a.m. Pacific hour here, which is when we saw most of the volatility in the marketplace, we had the clouds really collapse altogether on the aggressive, where even something like, say, the Doomsday Conservative here, we ended up breaking fairly decisively in that 10 to 11 hour. Right, and contrast this one more time with the NASDAQ, where the NASDAQ, we ended up going just a little bit outside of the Doomsday Conservative clouds, but we did go outside of the clouds nonetheless. All right, so I hope in today's video you were able to make sense a little bit more of today's sell-off and at least understand how, say, between the indices, which markets here had less volatility compared to the others. Uh, and then we also took a look at the chart of crude oil in a bit more uh, detail uh, to get an idea of how to play future inventories reports and having these models ready to go. Hopefully the alerts are something that's a useful addition for all of our Futures Volatility Box members. Love to hear any feedback you may be having. And if you haven't already signed up, uh, make sure you check your email. I sent out the instructions, I believe, yesterday. And if you haven't received them, just send an email and I can make sure you get them. All right, take care, everyone. Good luck trading, and we'll see you in the next update.